and welcome to Friday. Hello, welcome to Friday Reads at the Kimberly Little Shoe Public Library. And my name is Jill. And my name is Julie. I'm one of the library assistants here at the library. And Jill and I are here to help you find your next read. So our library has been closed for browsing for months and months and months. But you can still, we're still open for curbside pickup. So if you haven't done that before, what you would do is you would go to infosoup.org and you would sign in on your library card and then you would put the books that you want on hold be sure you pick little shoot or kimberly as your location and then when you get the text or the email that your book is in you come to the library during our regular operating hours you do not need an appointment and you will give us a call when you're in the parking lot or ring a little doorbell that we have outside and we will bring your items out to you so if you don't know what to put on hold that's what we're here for in Friday Reads, we're going to pick a subject for every video, and we're going to show you some titles that meet that criteria. So we're kicking it off this week with Banned Books Week. So today, Jill and I have several books that have been challenged at libraries and schools for their content. All right, so the first book I have today is Looking for Alaska by John Green. This is the first book by John Green. Um, it was challenged because of sexual content and language. Um, I think that considering the success, I haven't read it, but considering the success of John Green after this, I would think it's pretty good. It's also a new Hulu series, so if you like to read the book before you watch the thing, I would recommend this one. And my first book on the list is Dave Pilkey's The Captain Underpants series. This actually came in number two on this year's list of banned books. This series has two fourth grade pranksters named George Beard and Harold Hutchins. And they kind of accidentally on purpose turn their school principal into Captain Underpants. And this one was um, parents filing complaints because they thought that the book contained offensive language for elementary school children. And the first book in this series even comes with a Sturgeon General's warning saying some material in this book may be considered offensive for people who don't wear underwear. <laughs> this series has about 14 books now, so it's very popular. It's been translated into 20 languages. So that's my first pick for the Banned Books Week. This one's in the kids department at the Kimberly Little Shoot Library. So my next book is called The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian, which isn't, it's by Sherman Alexi. It's not actually true because it's fiction. It's not nonfiction. Um, I'm guessing this one was banned because of language. I Sherman Alexi actually came to Title Town Book Festival a couple years ago, and I went to see him, and he swore so much in his presentation. Oh, and, he said, <laughs> and he said this book is based on um, his his growing up in a, in a with a Native American family or part Native American. Um, and he gave some stories. He had some really good stories at his presentation. So I think this book would be hilarious, but maybe a little offensive. And this is Young Adult. And the Young Adult book that I have next is 13 Reasons Why. Some of you might be familiar from about this book from um, the Netflix series that was on. That was also kind of controversial. Um, this book is the one where the young man named Clay Starts the book by mailing a mysterious package to a girl named Jenny, and we soon learn that the package contains the audio tape suicide note of Hannah Baker, um, a girl that was in their class that committed suicide two weeks earlier. So the book is um, all about his going through 13 stories on seven cassette tapes, and this book obviously was challenged because of the depiction of suicide, but it's also landed on the list in previous years for the depiction of drug and alcohol use, sexual content, and being unsuitable for the young adult age group. I found the book very moving when I read it. Way I did not than... see the Netflix series, but... It's better than the Netflix <laughs> series. <laughs> the book is better. I have a classic one from our new classics department here at the Little Shoe Public Library, Kimberly and Little Shoe Public Library, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. And this is a story of Scout, who is um, the child of the lawyer Atticus Finch. And Atticus Finch is uh, defending an uh, African-American man who is wrongly accused of a crime. So, like, even though this was published in 1960, I believe, uh, it is still relevant to what happens now. So, 
This is very good. Sometimes classics are hard for me to read because of the language, but this is not, this was an easy read and very interesting. So I would recommend that one. <clears throat> and my second young adult book is the Internet Girls series. Um, the first one was the TTYL or Talk to You Later. Then the TTFN, Tata for now. And I've got Later Gator sitting here. This book series is um, about the winsome threesome, three girls who are communicating via text and instant messaging. So the whole book is written in that style. Um, it was challenged mostly because of the use of curse words, graphic description of sex, student-teacher relationships, and just too darn much partying. <laughs> and some parents just want that grammar and the English language to be used properly in this book. And actually, the author has rewritten the first three books to stay current with technology. She first came out with these in 2004, and we all know how much technology changes. So she has actually written, rewritten the first three to be current. So I, my first adult selection is Jodi Picoult, 19 Minutes. Jodi Picoult often has like a controversial subject, and this one is... Uh, is a school shooting, which is probably why it was banned, because it's kind of a serious topic. And it, it, it's, it's 19 minutes. It's 19 minutes. I read this one. It is really, really intense and very, very good. I mean, you do get to see what it would be like. Um, so, yeah. I read that one, too, and that one made me very tense as I was reading. Yes, it's very <laughs> yes. Right there. All right, and my selection from our classics collection is this book, The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, which came out in 1970. Um, this is the story of a young African-American girl named Picola Breedlove and her story of growing up in an abusive home during the years following the Great Depression. So it's told through the eyes of multiple narrators and the questions of race and gender are at the center of this book. So although the characters in the book, <clears throat> and through the characters in the book, excuse me, the author shows us that even the most subtle forms of racism, especially those from within the African-American community, can negatively impact someone's self-esteem and self-worth. So I started reading this a few years ago, and I'm going to definitely come back to this one. And I have The Kite Runner. This is another adult novel. It's by Khalid, K-H-A-L-E-D, Hosini. Um, this is a few years old. It's from 2003. And it was on the list because it of homosexuality, of religious viewpoint, violence, it can lead to terrorism and promotes Islam. I didn't notice most of that stuff in it. I read this. Um, it's a story about Amar, Amir, is a, who's a boy who is fleeing from Afghanistan. And it is, this is also pretty intense. I mean, you, I remember like the scenes from this that I'm still with me. I read it in 2003 when it came out and it was one of his best books, so if you read anything by him, read this one. My husband loved all his books. <laughs> he got hooked on that one, and then he read it all. Oh, good. I, I could see you. <laughs> and my last one from the adult collection is The Glass Castle. This landed in the top 20 on the challenge list. And for me, this story, I have the movie um, copy of this book, but for me, this story was about resilience. It's a memoir, um, and it's a, about the love of a peculiar but loyal family. Um, the author has come from very tough beginnings, um, very poor days where they didn't get to eat for several days, but um, had a very creative set of parents, very free-spirited. The mom was an artist, and the dad was very brilliant, but he was also a drinker. So when he drank, um, he was dishonest and destructive. So this family kind of skedaddled all around the country. So it's very inspirational. I thought it was amazing how she stayed with her family. She still sees her mother. Her father has since passed away, but she's close with her brothers and sisters, and it was them banding together to overcome this early beginning. That was very good, too. That was better than the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we hope that you have found something to read in all this. Uh, we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye.